agents or some external agents we can consider which are required for transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma. So here the agents are required only for uh, cross pollination and uh, no need of uh, agents for the self pollination process. So in this, uh, if you consider the agents, there are two types of agents are there. One is called as uh, abiotic agents and the second one is called as biotic agents. Abiotic agents means the agents which are helping in cross pollination which does not have uh, life S such as uh, air or wind and water. So these are considered as uh, abiotic agents whereas biotic agents means which have the life like uh, anim different types of animals, birds like different types of uh, life containing agents or helping in the transfer of pollen grains from one flower to the a stigma of the other flower. So let's first come to the abiotic type of agents. And before that, when we consider abiotic with abiotic, which one is most common type of agents which help in cross pollination means biotic are the most common type. And uh, when it comes to abiotic, it is uh, observed in very specific uh, type of plant spe species only. So let's come to first abiotic agents. In abiotic agents, first let's uh, discuss about the air or wind as a type of agent. So when air or wind is acting as an agent of uh, cross pollination, we call it as a anemophily. We call that as a anemophily. Anemophily is a condition where the air is acting as an external agent for transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma. So the, the, the flowers which are showing anemophily will show some special characters so that they get adapted themselves from the anemophily condition. So the first thing is uh, the non-essential organs should be small or reduced in their size. They may be completely absent. So if the non-essential organs are reduced or in size or if they are completely absent such that essential organs are easily get exposed to the environment. So that uh, the essential organs should be exposed or we can say that emerged so that uh, they will get they will get easily exposed to the uh, when they get easily exposed to the environment, when the pollen grains are moving through the end, they may sometimes get stick to the stigmatic surface. And uh, feathery stigmas is one other condition. As we know that when the stigma is feathery, so when it is uh, when the feathery stigma is exposed into the environment, when the pollen grains are moving, they may get stick to the feathery stigma so that they will not escape from this one. Then. Uh, light weight of pollen grains. When the pollen grains are light in weight, so they can easily be carried by the wind. Then non wetty nature. So when the pollen grains are non wetty, so the weight does not increase such that they can be easily get carried by the wind. And uh, more number of pollen grains are really produced by the flowers because why we are saying the more number of pollen grains should be produced means because the pollen grains which are released from the anther so they are moving in the air without any specific direction that is non-directional movement will be there the second thing is when they are moving in a non-directional uh, thing what happens is may, most of the pollen grains are get wasted that is the reason why more number of pollen grains should be produced by this anemophilus flowers and uh, one other thing is it is not by the choice but by the chance the pollination will take place by chance that is the reason why the more number of pollen grains should be produced so here if you take the example of corn cob like examples where if you see the diagram of a corn cob so the, stig the stigmas will be very much large and they get the style and stig style will be very long and the stigmas are exposed like this. So that uh, they, are, they are feathering their nature. So when they are exposed into environment whenever the pollen grains are moving they easily get stick to the feathery stigmas. Such type of uh, 
character is observed in uh, uh, corn cob like uh, like plants so that it will help in anemophily type of condition okay out of the two abiotic agents so the first one we we discussed is anemophily and the second one is a hydrophily when compared to hydrophily so anemophily is more frequent of course out of biotic and abiotic biotic is more frequent but in abiotic if you observe the hydrophily if you come if, if you compare the hydrophily with the uh, anemophily anemophily is most common when compared to hydrophily hydrophily is very uh, hydrophily is observed in very few number of uh, plant species only 30 genera of plant species are exhibiting this type of uh, uh, hydrophily where the water is acting as a age external agent of uh, cross pollination and here as we know that uh, as the water is helping in the transfer of pollen grains we consider uh, this may be observed in aquatic plants of course if you take the if you are, if you consider the aquatic plants some aquatic plants are there or majority of the aquatic plants are not exhibiting hydrophily very few number of uh, plant plants of aquatic nature are exhibiting this type of uh, hydrophily and of course hydrophily is observed in the lower group of plants particularly in algae bryophytes and pteridophytes why because in in this group of plants the uh, male gametes are motile so they have some special organs of uh, motility like flagellar cilia so with the help of the flagellar cilia they will swim in the water and reach the female reproductive structures so this type of uh, hydrophilic can be observed in the lower plants but in higher plants as like in angiosperms and uh, uh, angiosperms we observe very few number of plants with hydrophily nature in hydrophily also whether the pollination is taking place on the upper outer upper surface of the water or inside the water based on this condition two types of hydrophily are present one is called as a epihydrophily and second one is called as hypohydrophily So first let us start with epihydrophily. Epi means on the or we can say outer side. When the pollination is taking place on the upper surface of the water we call it as a epihydrophily. So epihydrophily is exhibited by uh, fresh water plants like in uh, Vallisneria and Hydrilla. So Vallisneria is a uh, dioecious plant which is a uh, rooted and submerged plant whereas hydrilla is also a freshwater plant which is a submerged suspended aquatic or hydrophytic plant so let's observe the how epihydrophily is taking place in vallisneria plant as i said that vallisneria is a dioecious plant where uh, male plant and female plant are separate so first here uh, they, they are protandrous actually protandrous means the maturity of the male reproductive structures is earlier or uh, earlier when compared to the female uh, maturity of the female reproductive structures so as they are protandrous first what happens the male reproductive structures that is stamens are matured first and they are released from the uh, male plant and um, they will come to the surface of the water for example if uh, this is a inner surface so this is a male plant and uh, as we know that uh, vallisneria plant will contain the ribbon shaped leaves so this 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 plant will release the male structures those male structures will come to the upper surface of the waters and they will be passively moving along with the water and when you take the female plant so female plant also contains the ribbon shaped leaves and one special character related to this uh, female structures is the female flower will contain the pedicel which is coiled which is coiled in its nature and here uh, when the female flower will get matured so what happens is the pedicel will get uncoiled 
such that the female flower will reach the surface of the water. And when it reaches the surface of the water, here the depression like structure will be formed on the uh, surrounding this uh, female st stigmatic surface. So, in that depression like structure, the whenever the passively moving uh, male flowers will come into the depression like structure, they also move in the circles around the stigmatic surface and at some point of time they get stick to the stigmatic surface. When the male flowers or the stamens will get stick to the surface, uh, surface of the stigma, what happens the female flower once again coil, the pedicel of the female flower will once again coil and uh, come back to the original position. So, here this is a uh, character where the pollination is taking place on the upper surface of the water. So, we call it as epihydrophily. In hydrophily, the second type is uh, hypohydrophily. So, hypohydrophily is a condition where the pollination is taking place inside the water. This type of uh, character can be seen in uh, sea grasses. So, particularly the sea grasses are uh, mostly marine plants. Sea grasses like the best example is Zostera will be exhibiting this type of character. And uh, as these uh, pollen grains are present inside the water, they are non, they should be non wetty so that they, uh, to maintain non wetty nature, they are surrounded with some mucilaginous covering. This mucilaginous cover will protect the pollen grains from becoming wet and other thing is uh, the pollen grains are long and ribbon shape or elongated structures will be there so that they will be easily moving inside the water surface and they are little sticky in their nature whenever they come and uh, they they come in contact with the stigmatic surface they get stick to the stigmatic surface and the pollination will be taking place so this is a nature of uh, the pollen grains which are showing hypohydrophily condition so these are the two types of uh, uh, hydrophily which are exhibited by aquatic plants and of course, there are some aquatic plants as I was saying that uh, majority of the aquatic plants does not exhibit hydrophily. So, such, uh, such examples like Nymphia and Nilambo, where the flowers are exposed into the environment. So, they are uh, attracted, the flowers are attracted by the insects. So, uh, insects are helping as agents of pollination in those plants. The second type of agents are the biotic agents. Biotic agents are uh, the one which are having life and helping in the transfer of pollen grains from uh, flower, one flower to the other flower. So, out of these biotic agents, we know that uh, the best or the most frequent uh, agents are the uh, insects. So, like there are many such type of insects are there, flies, uh, butterflies. bees, beetles. There are many such examples which are helping in the transfer of pollen grains. So, out of all these biotic agents, so the, of course, based on the type of biotic agents, there are different types are there. First, let us discuss about the entomophily. In entomophily, the agents of uh, cross pollination are insects. And out of all the biotic agents, entomophily is most frequent uh, or we can say the majority of the plants are pollinated with the help of the insects only. And out of these insects also, bees are most frequently uh, used external agents which help in the cross pollination process. Then coming to ornithophily. Ornithophily means the birds are the external agents which help in the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma. In these many such uh, examples are there like uh, hummingbird, okay. Here when a plant, when a uh, bird is acting used as an external agent for cross pollination, the body of that uh, 
birds will be small and they have a long beak. When they have the long beak, they can easily insert the beak into the flower in search of the nectar or any other uh, useful thing. So, in that process, uh, they are helping in the cross pollination process. The next one is a characterophily. So, the pollination is carried out by the bats. So, that type of uh, pollination is called as characterophily. Then, melacophily. Melacophily is the one where uh, the snails are helping in the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma. Or we can say that in melacophily, the agents of cross pollination are snails. Then, therophily. So, here there are many such uh, plant dwellers are there which help in the pollination process. Like we know the squirrels. The best example where uh, the plant dwellers, arboreals are there which will be helping in the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma. And of course, there are some primates like lemurs. So, they are also helping in the cross pollination process. And apart from this one, uh, ophiophile is also there. So, ophiophile is the one in which reptiles are helping in the cross pollination. The best examples in this one is snakes, gecko lizard or uh, garden lizard. All these are the examples which will be helping in the transfer of uh, uh, pollen grains from anther to the stigma. So, all this will come under ophiophily. So, like that where are, there are different types of external agents which are helping in the cross pollination process. So, out of the, all these biotic as we are saying that entomophily is the most frequent one or we can say more, more number of plants are uh, pollinated with the help of insects. And in insects also bees are most frequently used cross pollinating agents. Zoophily. If any animal is helping in the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma, we call it as zoophily. So, whatever we had studied till now in the biotic agents, all of them will be the part, all of them will be considered to be the part of zoophily only. So, next one, why does the insects are attracted towards the flowers? So, as we know that uh, there are some special structures like corolla, which is uh, multicolored and attractive. So, this coral is one of the reason where the insects or the birds are attracted. The second thing is uh, nectar. So, a sweet smelling uh, substance which is secreted by the flowers is called as nectar. This is one of the reason where the insects are uh, insects and also the birds are attracted towards the flowers. And one more thing is uh, as I am saying nectar is a sweet smelling substance. Of course, there are some uh, insects like beetle. So, these are uh, attracted because of the foul smell also. So, these are attracted only because of the foul smell. Like there are some plants like arum and aristolochia, where the flowers will emit foul smell. That foul smell is responsible for attracting the beetles in those plants. So, likewise, uh, plant, the flower, the insects which are reaching towards the or towards the flowers will get some rewards. So, what is the reward means? Either it may be, the, it is in the form of nectar and the pollen. So, both of them are acting, are considered to be the rewards for the insects which are reaching towards the, which are reaching towards the flowers. And uh, some plants will exhibit a spe special mechanism for attracting the insects and also uh, cr helping the cross pollination. So, here, uh, uh, the best example, uh, we can consider that uh, the rewards have been provided. So, in the form of nectar and also in the pollen, in the form of pollen grains also. So, here uh, apart from that one, we, as we are saying the false meal is also helping in attracting the insects as like in arum and aristolochia plants. So, here uh, apart from that one, so let us take some examples like uh, pronuba or Digeticula. So, this is the one insect or moth which is uh, specific for some 
plant that is yucca plant so yucca plant get pollinated only because of pronuba moth or tagetacula plant and uh, there is one more example amorphophallus amorphophallus contains uh, uh, spadix inflorescence which is of 6 feet height and uh, so what is the reward or what is the significance why the moths are attracted means here the amorphophallus will provide the space for laying the eggs or the moth whichever is reaching towards reaching to the amorphophallus will lay the eggs inside the cavity present in the ovary and uh, they, that is the moth is considering it as a safe place for laying the eggs and those eggs are hatched along with the germination of the seed. The same type can be observed in the yucca plant where the yucca ovary of the yucca flower is also providing the space for laying the extra pronuba or tagetacula moth. So here if any other moth is available when the pollination is taking place or for the as an agent of cross pollination. So cross pollination does not take place in yucca plant why because it is a symbiotic type of pollination between yucca and pronuba flowers. Uh, there is a significance between the pollination which is taking place between yucca and the pronuba because if pronuba is not available at the time of maturity of the pollen grains the yucca plant does not exhibit cross pollination and it will go for self pollination process. There are some insects which will uh, eat all the nectar and also pollen grains instead of carrying the pollen grains from anther to the stigma. So such type of uh, moths or insects are called as uh, pollen robberers or nectar robberers. So which will not okay those insects will uh, uh, take up the nectar and pollen grains from the flowers but it they will not transfer the pollen grains to the stigma of the other flower. So as they are eating out all the things so we call so that is what we can we can say that uh, the pollen and the nectar are acting as a rewards for them and of course eat and poly, eat, eatable pollen grains are also been observed in the rose plant. So these are uh, some characters related to the agents of cross pollination which are helping in transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of different flowers. So in the agents of pollination so there are some insects which are showing some adaptations for acting as agents of pollination like if you take uh, orchids like Ophrys. So here the female flower of, uh, the, of this Ophrys will structurally resembling that of uh, a moth called as Kalpa. So the Kalpa will uh, misunderstand that Ophrys as a female Kalpa and uh, try to reach the Ophrys flower and uh, copulate with the of his uh, flowers. So actually we call it as a pseudo copulation. So in the process of this pseudo copulation the kalpa is helping in transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma. So that is ophrys is uh, appearing tube like or structurally it is resembling like a uh, female kalpa moth. So that is the reason why so it is helping in the cross pollination process. And uh, one more plant is there that is salvia. Salvia flower is also showing some adaptations such that it will help in the it will get uh, uh, help from uh, insects for cross pollination process. In this the, the flower is uh, having the petal which is uh, bilipped. So upper lip like structure and the lower lip like corolla and in this one so the reproductive structures are present this is a style and uh, stamen here two stamens are present which is present on upper side one is a fertile one whereas which is present on the lower side this is a plate like structure which is considered to be the sterile stamen which is plate like and this one is a fertile stamen. Here in salvia the bees are helping in the cross pollination when the bee comes and uh, alight or it will, it will take uh, the alighting position or we can say lower part of this uh, corolla 
lower lip of the corolla is acting as a uh, landing place for the bees and when this bee he try to try to re, uh, enter into the flower so it will get struck with the plate like sterile stamen so it will not allow the insect to uh, go inside so in the meantime when it is pre exerting pressure on the sterile plate like structure what happens the upper fertile stamen will bend downwards when it bend downwards it will touch the abdomen or back side of the bee so when it when it touch the back side of the bee already uh, the pollen grains which are present so already uh, the one which is coming here so the pollen grains will be landing on the when it strike the fertile stamen will strike the back side of the insect such that the pollen grains are released onto the back side of the insect so when this insect will alight or will uh, when it uh, flies off to the other salvia flower what happens is uh, the stigma will touch the abdomen surface so when it touch the abdomen surface so what happens is the pollen grains are received from the other flower so this is the way how this uh, uh, salvia flower get pollinated with the help of the bees so this type of mechanism is called as liver mechanism or turnpipe mechanism this is a special type of adaptation that is observed in the salvia flower to get pollinated with the help of the insects so this is a way how some adaptations can be seen and of course already we had seen some more adaptations that in the tagetigula that is a uh, yucca uh, plant get pollinated with the tagetigula so that uh, it is providing the space for laying the eggs inside the cavity of the ovary so these are some uh, agents which are helping in the cross pollination such that the better seeds are produced or we can say that uh, more advantageous condition will be obtained in the plants so this is a process this is a one which is helping in getting new characters into the plant species which will help in the plant breeding process